Hello and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mba and I welcome you to our 29th lecture of creating an inventory management system. We always do 40 minutes so we shall open our timer and then start counting our 40 minutes, counting them down. So that without wasting any minute, let's go straight to our today's business. So we're going to resume from how I stopped at in the previous lecture. If you still remember in the previous lecture, uh, we stopped at this level whereby we are able to create financial periods and uh, submit them online. So we want now to be able to list them here so that uh, someone should be able to view the financial periods. So let's go ahead and uh, do that right now. So I'll come here to financial period screen. Financial periods screen this one here so i'm going to put a function that we, we are going to use to, to to display the financial periods okay uh so i don't know what i should do here let me go ahead and uh, i don't know how i should even do it <laughs> okay let's just do it together because i have so many ways of how to do it all right so i'm just going to put here the safe area and there's a body there so i'm going to go ahead and remove this one and then put um, a list view okay so let's first have here a list of items okay so i'm going to come here on top here and create a list of financial periods okay so i'm just going to simply come and say here list of financial periods okay object list of financial period object let me first get the financial period object financial period model so I'll come and put here and then I can call it items and initialize it to nothing by default okay so after doing that uh, I can call this one items so I'm going to create a variable called is loading okay so i'm going to create oh we can just use our loader okay we can use our normal loader then that we have so i'm just going to come here and say a list i mean sorry i'm going to call this one uh, list list builder okay so i want to compile it help me list view builder so this is a, a list view builder where you see it's a list view builder we have count and length are the number of items and then you have builder here and then the builder will open it receives the context and the index and then return the list tile and here the items with the item name and then uh this we just put uh, let me just comment this one on top so i just want to list the financial period like this so if it is empty if it is empty as you can see there it does not display anything okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to create um i'm going to create an empty list widget when the list is empty what should we display okay so i'm going to create a widget that is going to be doing that task so let's go ahead and just come to our widgets i think we have a a class of widgets do you have a class of widgets and uh, utils let's see Ta -da -da -da. i think it's here widget uh we have widget size of what what everything is 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 separated let me just come here and create a file called widgets a file and i'm going to call it widgets the that so i'm going to be putting my widgets all right so let's go ahead and put your widget that are going to call uh empty list widget okay this is going to return a widget and i'm going to call it empty list list widget okay so it's going to return i mean it's going to take a string of uh okay let's take like options i'm going to take 
Ah, okay. Let's take the first string of what? Of message. Okay. String of uh, message. And then string of button message. And then a function of a button. Yeah. So that is our empty list widget. So it is going to take the message, what you should display, and then after it will take um, the string of the message. I mean, what you display in the button, and then it will take a what when someone clicks on the button, what you should call. Okay. So I'm just going to come here and open curl bracket like this, means curl bracket like this, and then come here outside and put this down. So when someone clicks on that, you should call this. Okay, you should call whatever function that should have passed there. So I'm going to go ahead and call this empty list widget. So we come back here to our periods. Okay, sorry. Come here to our periods list. So here, on the body here, we check, okay. On the body here, we check if item is empty. Item is empty. Items dot is empty. We go ahead and call this empty widget and then in else part we put now the real list of items okay so in here we have to import it let's import it so we import it eh? so they uh, say so the first thing it will take to take the word no financial periods found I can send maybe to items found okay and then the second thing it takes it takes the add financial period so if you want maybe someone to add financial period okay we want maybe that to be the action button to add the final financial period or you can even call it maybe reload okay or you can say maybe reload something like that reload something like that okay so if you want to do your action to be at the financial period it should be like that okay and then here we have now uh when someone click on it it opened this bracket and then call this function so you go to uh financial period create screen hope you've understood that one so if we save here you see we have that kind of a what that kind of uh, a simple list. Like if there's not any financial period, you have a button of what? Of add financial period there. Okay? So that is uh, beautiful. That is beautiful. Or you can even maybe decide to put reload instead. Okay? If you want to maybe make it reload, let me just put here. Reload or refresh. Okay? And call it re refresh. Okay? So, or reload something like that. Okay, so this button we can make it look much more better. Okay, I'll give it a, a primary color. I believe we have a primary color somewhere. Okay, and then we can give it some padding. Yeah, so I can give it some decoration if I want. Okay, let me leave it there. <laughs> let me just come here on top here and give what you call size eight and give it maybe five. So give it fifteen okay, like this. Now I can come and give it maybe some decoration border radius of twenty. So yeah, so that's a simple button refresh. Okay, so now I want when someone clicks on refresh, we should go ahead and do the refresh button. Okay, the refresh logic. So I'll call this function. See, it is a uh, widget, it is taking this and this and then the function. So when someone clicks on that, it will call this function. So let's go ahead and create here a uh, function for reload. So I'm going to create here, uh, maybe I'm going to call it my init, my init function. Okay, so it's going to work on what? On getting or initializing okay so i'm going to call it here when someone clicks on reload i call the my init function okay so i hope you're seeing and i hope you're understanding so when someone clicks it will call the my init function so here in my init function i'm going to call it automatically when the system when the page opens so i have to put here init what init state 
okay in each state so i have utilized it in neat state so that when someone open this screen you should call this my init function so in this init function we are going to call we are going to call uh the what the we are going to call the get items okay the list of financial period getting items okay so it's what you're going to call here now to do that to do that we're going to let me come to this one national period you see right now we have only uh to json okay and then we have uh the variables that's what we have there now we're going to put two things okay we're going to put uh, uh something that will be getting the data now so in this financial period i want to explain to you something we're going to add uh three important functions okay so we're going to add three important functions the first function is for getting getting data from online that's the first function okay it will be getting the data on from online so after getting the data online it will go ahead and save the data to local database if uh if data was found if that is not empty so that is how we're going to do it so it will first go uh, we're going to create a function that going to get the data online so if the data is not empty we're going to save it on the local machine if there's some data that's come so and uh, it will go ahead and return the data and then we're going to create now another function that's going to get uh the local data so this function its task is just to get the local data okay and then after we shall now get the function that we shall create the function that gets gets what all the data so that the four function that are going to create so in simple terms let me get something here and i draw i think i don't know whether i can get somewhere to draw so you can understand let me get here some word documents so you can understand the logic that i'm going to use here it is very important because it is like the backbone of what we're going to do so we're going to have we're going to have the internet okay or our server somewhere there okay then we're going to have our local server our local storage okay then we're going to have now the phone or the user interface okay or what the person is using okay now those are the things that are going to be in the play so here we have the what the internet okay or the server okay then here we have the what the local server okay yeah so and then you have now the what the screen call the ui or what what the user is uses okay so i'm going to show you the most optimal of doing things so we can have our person so the person is going to interact with this one So the person will interact with this one okay so our user will be here 
button here like this one okay let me just let me just carry and insert i want us to understand this very well so you can be able to do what uh to move together because this is like the backbone of everything okay Okay, so you have the user interacting with the phone, and then you have the local storage. Uh -huh, so, I'd like us to know, and then you have the what? The web, what you call the internet, or the server, where the data is originally stored. Uh -huh. So, let me get this well organized. Okay, hope you can see that. So now I'd like you to know that um, I'm going slow so you can understand things. So literally, this is our what this is our phone that place where you're seeing the red it is a what it is the phone now okay so this is on the phone and this is what is on the phone. Now, one last thing that we're going to have here is the HTTP engine. So that is the one that will enable us to connect to the internet and get some information and uh, we are able to use it offline. Okay, so just know this is this this online server is uh, outside the phone, okay? Let me I want to go slow so you can understand things. I want to go slow so you can understand things very clearly because this is the, the whole brain of everything that we have been doing. So this is the one that can be able to send to us some information and get it from internet. So I'm going slow so you can understand. So between here, this is the phone, okay? Eh, my handwriting the that's the phone okay so this is the user and he's accessing the screen now uh, so what the user is expecting or what is what is always be done what what we always do uh, we always just do like this okay or the normal thing or the normal how things are always be done okay is uh, uh, the user makes a request the user will forgive me the user makes a request okay Okay, and then this request is sent to the what? To the server. 
okay that's that like the way how we have been doing and then the server sends back the response okay and then we display it on the screen straight that's how i've been doing it okay but uh, this is not the most optimal way because i've not made use of this one what does it mean it means that if the internet is off okay then the user cannot be able to access the data on the server so what you're going to do right now i mean uh, what you're going to do uh, right now, the logic that we're going to do, we're going to do it like this. So watch very carefully. Okay. So the user is going to just be communicating with this local database. Okay. It's going to, se to send a request to the local database. Okay. So whether with or without internet, and then if there is some data in the local database, we shall send back the what the response to the user like this. Okay, so there is no more direct connection to the HTTP. So here we are going to read the logic on top here. Or let me just do it like this. Let me do it like this. We are going to have our logic here. I want you to understand very clearly. That's why I'm not rushing. call it offline capability logic okay so we're going to have here our offline capability logic here so offline capability logic when the user let's say that the user needs to get a financial period When the user wants to get a financial period, what we shall do the user from his phone when he sends a request, we shall send it here to the offline capability logic. Okay? Then this offline capability logic will check, will go ahead and check if there is what there is some data on the local machine okay on the storage okay so if there is some data this local storage will send it back and if there is no data this local storage will send it back so if there is some data it will go ahead and send it to the user's screen okay so if there is no data in this one in this offline capability function or logic it is where you're going to put the logic of checking if there is no data you should go ahead and fa and fetch online and wait if there is some data i mean if there's some data that comes from online you should go ahead and bring it back here so when it comes it first saves it offline okay it first saves it offline not sending it it first saves it offline and then when this person makes a request we'll go ahead and send so you can see that kind of a what that kind of a design so if you have this kind of a design what does it mean it means that uh we are not going to do what we are not going to uh, if there is, if the, even if the internet connection is not off, this offline logic will go ahead and show the user what is in their phone. When they connect to their phone, 
it go ahead and fetches what is on the what on the internet just like the how whatsapp does so that is what we're going to do so i want you to be very very carefully because this is the one that you're going when you, this is the way how you're going to make the user use your application even without seeing that something is loading yet the data is coming from internet all right so that's what you're going to do so let's begin so as i told you we're going to create the following functions okay so watch very carefully i'm going to create these functions Come here. So the first function that I'm going to collect to create is the function the function that is going to be here. One, the function one, okay? It's going to be here. It's going to be called uh get data get data or fetch data get data okay this function will be used to get to check i mean to get i mean to check check if if there is some data offline and send it back to the screen. I mean, and send it to, and send it to the screen. Okay. Then fetch, fetch offline. I mean, online. I can send it to the screen. Then fetch online data if if there is i mean and fetch online data in background okay so that's the first scenario the first scenario is if the if there is some data okay so now that is the first if okay the second if so it will fetch the, the here the point is if there is some data it will send what is in there in the what in the, the local database to the user and then it remain in the background while it is fetching the one that is offline online so the second if if there is no data in local storage <coughs> if there is no data in local storage okay okay it will first it will it will first it will first uh, First, fetch the online data as it waits. Okay. Okay, so, and then try to fetch the offline data. So, if there's no data, it will wait for the online. If there's no data, if there's some data, it will send what is offline and then fetch the online one in background. So that is the first function. Okay, we've called it get data. Okay. The second function, we're going to call it get online data. Okay. This function will, okay will fetch online fetch online data comma if network 
is on it will delete all the data in local database and save the data that has come from online to the local database that is what this function will do so if there is if there is no internet it will not delete okay it will not delete if there is no internet so that is the what the second function for it it will be just fetching the data from the online once it comes it saves here that is this function okay so let me just elaborate more okay so here we have what we have called function 2 okay this is function 2 so for it it will work on getting the data online and save them on offline it will not do anything with getting them and this one function one it will work on fetching the data from offline i mean from the local database and send it back to the user okay i hope you can see that this is f1 this is f2 i hope you're understanding okay so now uh the last function is get local data which is function three f3 get local data okay so for this function for this function it will fetch local data and send it back to whatever function has called it so you see so it means that this function 3 it is going to be here so that is how our logic is going to be like so that is what we're going to write literally so you can see that is what we are going to write so in my opinion we're going to begin with this one followed by this one and then followed by this one okay so now let's face it we're going to now do so you can see the engine eh? so to come up with this engine you really need to have an experience to have such kind of an optimal thing okay so now let's go ahead and uh, do the logic let's begin with the function one so we come to our project We come to our project. Let's bring this nearby. Okay, so we begin the function one, fetch get data. Okay, so here we are. So I'm going to call this one get data. So I'm going to create our first function, which is going to be get data. Let me first disable copilot. Okay, we begin now with the first function. So you see, we just have this to JSON and then this one. Okay, so begin the first function called. Um, so it's going to return a list of this object. So it's going to be future, and then it's going to return financial period list, future 
list of financial period and then we put get data or you can call it maybe get items you can call it anything that you want okay so sometimes we may need to to do what to pass a where condition okay we shall come to that okay we may need to pass a where condition okay so we can make it an option no? so if you want to make an option just make it like this string and then put maybe where okay and then by default we make it nothing okay like this so this is going to be asynchronous like this so put it here okay so after doing that now we have to now do the logic of refetching the data itself now okay so let me just come and put here maybe a list of i can call this one data and i make it empty okay i can call it maybe items and make it empty and then come here and return the items so that is what you're going to be returning so let me call this one the other side so you can have no errors so I'll come in financial period screen and then I put get items eh? so yeah mm -hmm. why is it crying okay that to be static public static like this so that's it okay so here we're just getting this and wait ah. so here uh, in this function we just create our simple uh, list and then here we come here to get items so right now we are creating this uh, function for getting the data so these functions all of them they're going to be in this thing okay so now that is the first function so as we say this first function what will it do it will get uh, it will check it will get the offline data okay it will get the offline data if there is no data it will wait if this if i mean if there's no data it will try to check the online data and then wait so you know before we, we get the online data i mean before we get the offline data we must first have the online data because the only data is the one that is going to be saving offline and then this one the local one can be able to get okay so we're going to begin with this we're going to begin with this okay let's begin okay we're going to begin with this a function two and then we come to function three because this one will not work if it does not have the data in local here so uh so here we're just going to come in this function and then just call the function for getting online data okay so we're going to write the function to get online data so i'm just going to copy this it's going to be look pretty much the same like the same just let me copy this and then come and paste it here so only here i'm just going to put get online maybe items okay so get online items so in this function i'm going to call the get online items okay so you can be able to test it and see if it can bring something back all right so let's go ahead and do that await and then say get online items this one even is not going to bring this kind it's not going to return anything for it will be communicating to the local heart to the local machine i mean to the locals to the local database so you're not it's going, going to return something back so we call it okay that's for the sake of so we call it here so i'm just going to remove this I'm just going to make it feature void like this so it cannot return anything so you see it okay so here you go so this one i don't think we need the where I don't think we need a where for now it does not need a where okay okay so there we go now let's go ahead and write the logic of uh, of getting the offline data okay so the first thing that you know going to take if is offline if the phone is offline you shouldn't even bother okay so you shouldn't even bother to fetch the online data we have our function in utils that checks connectivity okay so i'm just going to come here and say if 
is not online eh? if he's not connected so i'm going to put here if he's not and then say await dot util utils dot what dot connected so if he's not connected i just return because i don't want to bother myself if i'm not connected okay so if it is not connected it just returns back okay so if it is connected now it is going to fetch the data okay it's going to fetch the data okay so let's see now how we can fetch the data so if it is connected it's going to fetch the data from internet and then saves it offline so in this case we're going to write our what our logic for fetching the data from internet so we go back to uh, what we did last time in the in the create screen if you still remember we now have something called what response model so we say response model if you still remember response model and let's say resp equals to now we know uh so we're going to put here equals to and then we say response and then we say await if you still remember what you studied yesterday we say await utils dot http aha uh -huh, now remember our remember our what remember our remember our lists like uh, the lists of items are always in get more method if you still remember our api the list of item are in what are in get method for example this one eh? you see this one is in is a get method so it means that the post is not going to help us so i'm just going to we're going to get now the what the post so I'll press control here and click and then go to the uh, function that we created so i'm just going to duplicate this one i'm going to duplicate that real function of post and create one for the gate so i'll copy that and then after copying okay i copy the whole function of of, of post remember i've collapsed it here here okay I copy and then come and paste it i just going to write http gate so let us see things that we can change there almost everything is okay everything is the same okay everything is the same only that instead of putting here dot post you're going to put dot what dot get okay so you see everything is okay so you can even write the logic of saying maybe you'll be passing and then you say this is get this is post so everything is the same like you don't need to change even things i don't think we need to okay so i just do that so we have our get method okay so instead of putting dot post put here dot get yeah and then the logic is the same so you see the beauty of doing functions carefully so here i'm just going to do dot get so since i don't have data to send i just send the empty what curl bracket and then here i put a what our end point our end point is ready here is ready here okay so if you still remember uh in the other one we had to add the word api okay so i'm going to add here also the api so our input is called financial period so i'm just going to put here um like this and then i say api stroke and then i put the endpoint like this api stroke endpoint like this okay so in one line i'll have made a what http request can you see that i hope you can see that okay i hope you can see that you can surround it with try and catch if you want to make sure that there is no any problem okay now at that point i think now it's okay but you can sound it with try and catch let me sound it with try and catch put here and then command <clears throat> sorry can sound it try and catch so just put your question mark and then make it null equate it to null okay and then come here and say response equal to that and then come and try surround this one is try and then you catch it here in case there's an error e and then you can just know that there's some problem <coughs> like this so here you can now be able to check if if uh, if what if response is what is null then you know that there is no more proceeding okay 
you just print uh, failed or you can make even maybe toast failed to fetch data so you know there's a problem you can do some toast maybe do you do you have a toast function i don't think we have it so at this point you can just return with the response if everything is whatever come here is now something like that like this so there you go now if it is not now let's go ahead and put whatever has come we put the code and the response so print uh code i hope it's going to work clearly to string uh let me just put here code okay and then you put here a message and then here you put maybe some data that has come let's see and see if everything is okay all right so there you go let's try so let's try so let me just show you so here in uh, tilts when someone clicks on uh, reload when someone clicks on refresh it will call init so it calls init so just say items equals to await financial period dot get items so you call this get items get items that is inside financial period so when you call get get items for now we are just calling the what the get online items straight so this get online items checks if we are offline it returns if it just returns from there if we are offline okay if we are not connected if we are connected it goes ahead and make sure that this one is null at beginning and then after it makes a http get okay so if it fails i put this on the console and then i return because i know it is it has failed so i've already designed the function of getting http get of which you can see here it is under utils you can pause the video and look at it it's just like the one that we did on post yesterday all right so let's go ahead and, and try this out okay click uh -huh. Are you getting anything? All right, let's test. Let's debug one by one. So I'll come here and say, I believe it is reaching this point. Maybe here. Let me print here. Fetching. Okay. I refresh. I save. I refresh. It is not reaching there. Good. Okay, let's come back to financial periods screen here. Mm -hmm. Is it calling this? Let's try and see. It's not calling this. Good. Uh, let's come to here on tab. Let's see if it is fixed. It is calling even this one here. When you click on reload. Okay, I hope that is it. Huh? No, no, I've put this in the wrong place. I've put it in the wrong place. You see, refresh is here, and this is the function that we're supposed to put. We're supposed to put it here. Okay, we're supposed to put it here in this widget, empty list widget, if you still remember it. Okay, so let's go ahead and click here. I think now it's fine. Click on refresh, it is fetching. Aha, uh -huh. so you see, it is returning at least authenticated and you see we don't have any error and the message is very clear and authenticated okay but we know how to fix this so let's go ahead and fix this i think it is now in the gate let's look at how the gate was or the gate is so http api gate let's come here uh, to the model of gate this one here my list let's go to it okay so get user so this get user i think we fixed it yesterday you just go ahead and get the the user id okay which is this okay which is fine and then it get the user so i think we're not sending back the we're not sending the user let's see 
let's see if you're sending the user id so i'll come to to what i'll come to our http i mean sorry i'll come to our http gate okay let's see the data that you're sending let's see the data that you're sending so print See, we are sending the logged in user ID. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, is the data really going? Let's try to attach it here. And you see. You see, it has worked. So the data is not going in that format of a JSON object. Why? Why is it being considered as data if we send it in this format? Let me look at some of the points that are done here. So here I just there is data how I do it. pass it through query parameters yeah you have to pass this one into query parameters not through the data you pass it through query parameters true that is true so now it should be fine refresh fetching you see it comes clearly you see that is so beautiful so the data is coming the data is coming that is so nice so you have to pass this one into query parameters so let's come back here let me remove this word fetching let's come to a function of model HP model here so you can see here it is fetching let me put here where the response starts yeah so this is going to make your life very easy even in your other project you'll just reuse the same function so you see, uh, let's go ahead and click on send. You see, let's first remove this unnecessary console. Eh? I think you're having just some ugly printing. This one. So that's it. Hope you can see that. All right. So let's go ahead and send. So you see, this the data has come. The code is one and listed successfully and the data is here that is so 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 beautiful <coughs> so we have successfully uh done this we have successfully done this we are getting this so now so i've got this now we're going to work on the logic of sending the data to the offline that's the logic that we're going to work on we're going to work on that logic of sending the data to the offline so that this one can have somewhere to feed it from okay so this we are done here it is getting the data from internet through http we get it here now we're going to work on the function of saving it here after saving it here so this person can have to feed from here okay so this is the logic of offline capability you understand it eh? So we know to save that data offline. So that's it for today. I hope you've understood. So in the next lecture, we shall start from there and we save this data on the local machine. And then the local machine can be able to feed on that data. And once it can feed on that data, it will go ahead and display it. By doing like that, our application will be like seamless. It will be just like loading even the user without knowing what is going on in background. And to make everything uh, interesting, and I'm, I'm now going to show you how you can write this logic without repeating yourself. By just regenerating it, you press one button, everything that we're doing here, it creates itself. And you just copy and paste and implement. So that's going to improve your what? Your productivity. Yeah, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, that's it for today. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's meet on the, in the 30th lecture. We're going to learn more interesting uh, things. And have a good day.